Hi, and welcome to uh, one of our first um, sessions about. And uh, this time i um, joined with Laura Haywood, um, who works for the Tree Group. Uh, I'm the Commercial Director, James Walters, and uh, Laura handles our inbound leads for our clients. So um, hi, hi, and welcome. Just let us know a bit about your, your day today, Laura. Yeah, thanks, James. So I work primarily uh, in lead generation for the Tree Group, and that can come through various ways. But one of the one of the big ways that we found works really well is through inbound leads. Okay. So an inbound lead would typically be somebody um, might be going onto a website, and they might want to I don't know download a white paper, or they might want to have a look at a price list. And when they do that, they will enter their email address in. Now at that point, they can open the content and, and do whatever they want with that. The CRM then logs that visit and it will also then subsequently, if they come back in and, and view other documents, it will log that as well. Mm -hmm. So how, how I would use that to generate a lead is I would look to see if I could identify that person um, because sometimes email addresses can be numbers or it could be a full name. Okay. Um, so if I can identify that person, um, that's the first step. Um, and then we have to think about, are they the perfect buyer for this, this company? So if we think that they are, then I would then put them uh, typically on a sequence. So it's a series of very targeted emails, um, trying to get them engaged um, with, with myself, um, and then starting a discussion. Okay. Um, the CRM is also very helpful in that it also shows um, how they've come on to that website. So is it through a search engine? Um, have they, you know, directly come in through other routes? And use all these bits of information to try and piece together the best way to start a conversation with them. Okay, perfect, yeah. And, and, and I suppose what you're doing is adding an extra channel, so to speak. Cause when, when we talk with lots of companies, they, they expect an inbound lead is somebody filling out the contact page mm. or the contact form on their website. But I suppose what we're doing is using content to get in touch with people and start a conversation much earlier than waiting for them to actually contact sales. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's about providing value as well to that, to that customer. So I, see for example if they downloaded a series of case studies um, mm -hmm. about a specific vehicle or they might have been looking at a certain product in terms of a data sheet or a price list we we could generally deduct from that that they are that's something that they're interested in so we yeah, can also perfect. tell as well what sort of stage they're potentially maybe at in in that process so are they just having a look um, to, to, to investigate a, an issue or a problem that they're having um, or are they now getting to the nitty gritty and they want to see a lot of dimensions and specifications and price lists and that normally means that, that they're, they're further along in that process so yeah and, and, I, and that, that's the key thing isn't it everybody's got less and less time to produce more and more results so yeah. rather than just having a, a, a sales phone number and a sales email address for somebody to contact. I suppose it's about piecing together the bits of information to make contact with somebody yes. when it's relevant to them and be helpful and at, at the right time so you're not spending yeah. time on somebody who's not quite ready. Yeah, I mean, the beauty with a lot of the sequences that I use, especially if I think this person is, you know, a really good uh, buyer, is that, that we can set that up within, you know, a couple of minutes tailor it specifically to that person and then that will that will run in the background so it means i'm not constantly sending emails or that i'm writing out from scratch every day so it's a really yeah. efficient way of keeping that conversation and that discussion going yeah and, and i suppose that's important to, to nurture people to the right stage so yeah. then it feels like when they come back to you it's on it's on their own terms and and you've also given them the right information so yes. they understand why they should buy from from the company i suppose yeah that's right that's yeah right. and what 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 sort of what sort of trends um so yeah the tree group launched back in 2016 and you joined in october what's been the change since october 2016 to to now 
Um, from my perspective, I think we are, uh, we've kind of honed our processes an awful lot. Um, we now have experience of what we're doing. Um, and I think we've, we've have proven sales that show, you know, we're, we're, we're really good at what we do. Yeah. We understand the markets that we're working in. Um, and we're being really savvy with the way that we, we use the CRM to, to, to you know, work and, and generate leads. So we're slicker, uh, we're better at what we do. Um, and that's the main thing for me. And it, also as well, from my personal development, it's learning um, more about inbound. That, that's been a, you know, a big thing for me to go on that, that journey. Um, but the biggest thing is having experience and you, sometimes yes. you just have to, you have to go through and you see, you see certain things happening and you're able to pick up on nuances a lot easier. So before I may have had a bit more of a scattergun approach to contacting people, um, but we email less now, but we email with much more targeted um, information for that person. Yeah, and that, that's that's a really good point, and probably a, a tip for anybody wanting to get better at marketing and sales is yeah. If, if we look back, we we would chase not every lead, um, but we would we felt in 2016 we were being really targeted, um, but like you say, and we even we still had all the tools around us, but mm. it's it's not worrying about chasing every single inquiry yeah. or, or inbound lead from content. It's spending less time for higher quality activity on the right yeah. sort of people i suppose we're, we're more yeah. confident around not worrying about going after people i don't know do yeah you, do, do, you, do you agree yeah definitely i mean and a lot of the time you know you have to wait till that person is in the is in the right stage and they mm. are ready to buy i mean i often have cases where i can't identify the person but i can see over time that they've been coming back and back and back and you know what they've been looking at now it might be at that point um i can find a little bit more information and i can identify them but mm -hmm. i won't tend to do that initial contact until i'm quite confident of that so it can feel like oh i don't want that lead to go but, but i don't just want to send them something that isn't tailored and that isn't yeah. relevant i want to wait until the right time and that does take discipline to do that to, to just wait until the right moment yeah definitely and it's um, um, We've definitely seen that the the clients that have regular content, that have email marketing, that have a few different channels, then you don't. The salesperson doesn't need to be picking up the phone every day or sending no. a, a one to one email because no. you know that somebody comes into the pot, into the CRM, and that they're going to be nurtured over time. Um, so it feels like it's on their own ter the, the lead's own terms uh, as well. Yeah. I mean, the, the bulk of my work, you know, isn't call based at all. You know, mm. it's very much just starting off that initial conversation and then guiding them down the, the sales funnel until, you know, we feel that it's right time to have a, you know, a call or a discussion or, or a meeting. So, yeah. And is there any, um, is there any kind of styles of content or types of content you think have been the most successful at generating good quality leads or, or does it, really depend on yeah i mean we, we we have um we work with one partner and they're they're really seen as an industry um thought leader you know and he doesn't produce content that often but when he does people know that that content is going to be extremely useful um and something that you wouldn't get somewhere else so mm. it all depends on who the, the the typical customer is but things like case studies that are unique Mm -hmm. um, or different or have done something that perhaps has been done before but people weren't talking about it um, those are really successful and um, it, it depends on what the content is some mm. of the most popular documents can just be a simple old general brochure mm -hmm. as long as it's kind of slick sometimes it can just be a price list but we've, the ones with hold most value are the ones that just hold something a bit different which are mm. you know really tempting for that for that buyer and over time the more you can do that you know they'll think ah i need that and i've seen you know, that guy really knows what he's doing yeah so so it, it all depends it all depends but yeah it, it's, if you can make it unique and something a bit different that you know that your buyer is typically looking for then those are the most successful yeah documents yeah and, and it's a way to move away from the hard sell 
Yeah. Because you're you're using content to generate leads. Um, so you're actually generating a lot more leads than if you waited for people to yeah. contact you through uh, a phone number or a contact form. I mean, um, the hard sell in, our, in, in my experience just it, it is, can be just a waste of time most of the mm. time because either that person isn't ready to buy yeah. or they might feel like you're trying to pressure them into buying. Um, you know, they will approach a partner because they want that partner to help them. Mm. Um, and it's our job to 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 nurture that relationship until we, we think there's an opportunity there worth pursuing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and and it's and it's approach an, an approach the inbound approach to sales and marketing is is still fairly unique in automotive. Yeah. So companies that go down this route can differentiate um, and be seen as more ethical. I, I suppose. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, personally, I don't like. Uh, I. I would hate to receive an email myself out of the blue that had no relevance, mm. um, you know, and I think it would damage that relationship I had with that company because it's me that's uninvited, it's unsolicited, whereas mm. with inbound, you know, your customer, potential customer is coming to you. You don't, you don't have to, you know, do a, a letter, an email letter. You don't have to, you know, spam them. So, mm. It's a really, you know, I keep saying the word efficient, but it really yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. And it's and and I suppose a, a, a good tip um, before we work with a company, m most of them have PDFs and some sort of standard sales yeah. collateral, but normally it's just a, a PDF link on the website. So you know, we we found quite good results in instead of just putting the PDF on your website, um, use the blog to talk openly about it. So content mm. that's free to everybody. Um, but then put the full document behind a form, so then somebody's going to give you their details, yeah. and that that's what's worked well to, um, I suppose, spot leads much earlier than, than yeah. waiting for them to make contact with um, with sales. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, yeah, we work. We also look at inbound um, companies, which are slightly different, but it's another way to to identify the perfect buyer. So the CRM allows us to see which companies are, are looking at our, our partner websites. Yeah. Um, and we can see how many, we can see where they've been, what they've been looking at, and how many people from that company have been doing that. And that's quite interesting because at that point you can't identify who those people are at an individual level, but you can normally work out what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, I would then perhaps use uh, another tool like LinkedIn to try and find who that that, that perfect buyer might be. So yeah. um, that's another way to 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 try and find you know the perfect buyer. Yeah, and and to not I suppose to be a bit to be in charge of finding your ideal customers. Yeah. Rather than just sitting there waiting for the phone to ring and bashing exactly. out a hundred generic emails, it's yeah. it's yeah it's being um, targeted yeah. and. Um, Offering your time to the right sort of people. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, exactly. very so. good. Yeah, very good. And and if you to had have one tip to help people day to day uh, when they get a new inquiry, what what do you think's been the most successful for you to to get a response to that first inquiry? I think asking the right questions mm, okay. definitely. Um, asking the right question can be you know add a lot of value to that to that relationship um, it could be something as simple as I've seen you've downloaded X Y and Z um, I thought you'd be interested in this bit of content because it's really similar mm -hmm. um, you know have you had trouble before with this particular area and you know how can we help and it can be some. it doesn't have to be long it can be very short but if you can ask the right question you might hit you know the jackpot and they you get a very detailed reply back and immediately mm. then you start to really understand where the buyer's issue is what do they want um so yeah ask good questions <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely yeah and, and, and avoid questions that can potentially get yes or no answers yes exactly get, open get somebody questions. talking yeah yeah, yeah. Sh show interest and show that you've researched somebody in there yes they're pretty much pretty likely to actually open up to you and yeah, give you some, some good absolutely. information so. and a lot Very of the good. time they are aware of the business um, mm -hmm. they are aware of our partner is and and it might be somebody that sat there for five years 
and never had you know never had the outreach by that partner and it yeah. can just take one email to to, to kick start that conversation so that's it yeah definitely yeah and um yeah a lot of the sales research shows that the majority of, of a buyer's journey is done before ever contacting a salesperson and the first company to respond is typically the one that gets the business so yeah. this more kind of ethical inbound approach gets that conversation started a, a yeah. lot earlier yeah, and yeah when, when when the decision makers just doing their early research and then the company's front of mind when they're when they're yeah. ready to go so very good all right well it's, it's lovely to get an overview of what you do day to day and a few tips um there'll be a few more of those series um back on our blog the treegroup.co.uk slash news and uh we'll hear from laura again uh, very soon thanks laura all right. brilliant thanks for your yes. time bye, bye.